Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we will review our summer transfer activity for the 2023 season. Uh, there's been a couple of incomings, a couple of outgoings. It hasn't been as hectic of a transfer window as I would imagined. But um, there's still a little bit of the transfer window to go and we've got one player who is a major, major problem. But before we talk about that, we will address the outgoings and the incomings. The outgoings first, Predrag Reykjavik left the club to join Leon for £12 million. Pounds. Our backup goalkeeper didn't really feature all that much last season. We've made a tidy little bit of profit on him as well. As you can see, he conceded seven goals in the four games he played in the league. That really did put me off and kept Jack Butland in the number one spot. And he ended up going to Leon. He wanted to leave. He was transfer listed by request. So I accepted the £12 million pound offer. Now, as you can see, an absolute ton of loan signings that I've left to join other clubs. We'll, we'll talk about a couple of them. Milton Yeber is a Colombian central midfielder who has joined um, Social uh, in France. I believe they are playing League One football. So he will be a regular starter in the top division in France. And with his physicals, I believe he can at least at least hold his head up high whilst he's playing at that, at that level. Um, and I hope to see him come back much stronger than he is currently. Malt Hemmingsen has joined Hertha Berlin in the top division in Germany. 20 determinations, always nice to see. 19 year old Danish striker. I don't have such high hopes for him as I do for the Colombian centre midfielder, but I hope he can at least have a good season and come back to us a better player. Another one to talk about is Adria Robust, who's joined Huesca in the Spanish first division, I believe. Huesca are. They are. Um, a decent uh, right back and he could certainly have came into our squad and been a back up right wing back but I prefer him to get first team football at any given opportunity and the fact that he's a Spanish national going to the um, Spanish first division is absolutely fine by me should uh, get some good game time there a little a one that might surprise you is Willem he's ended up joining Celta Vigo for on loan for the rest of the season playing again in La Liga and I felt like I had to loan him out just purely down to the fact that he needs first team football right now. I can't guarantee him that. You know, we've still got Haaland, we've still got Esposito. He would be playing second fiddle to both of them strikers. And at the minute, he he did some heroics for us at the back end of last season. And although it doesn't look that impressive, he did score 11 goals and 15 starts in our competitions, which is nothing to sneeze at, especially when you take into account some of the importance of them goals. So hopefully he can go to Celta Vigo and become an absolute top, top striker. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But at the very least, he'll be getting first team football. Another one that has left the club who had potential to have joined the first team squad was Slavko Jevric, who's joined Rebel Leipzig on loan for the rest of the season. He is going to be a starter according to the loan contract. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that to make sure he's actually getting the football that was offered when they made the loan offer. He doesn't look good enough to me to be starting for Red Bull Leipzig in the top division of Germany. But they have said he's going to be, so I will um, I will listen to them. And the physicals, certainly for a centre-back, are pretty tasty. His pace and acceleration aren't great. Um, he's, some of his metals as well are pretty top tier for someone at his age, at this point of his development. His technicals are fine as well. Two-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential. Hopefully, hopefully, he will come back a much better player with a view of maybe coming in the first-team squad next season. Anyone else I really want to point out. Um, he's a decent Turkish central midfielder. He's ended up joining. I, did, I don't really like loaning players to the MLS. I don't feel like they get the best development there. Even if they are playing every game. And they always come back at a similar level to what they left the club at. But they were one of the few clubs who offered them first team football. Which is of course one of the major um, issues when loaning a player out. How much football they are going to get. But that addresses most of all of these have got potential to grow some of them into first team players some of them just to develop and then sell moving on to the ends george akuenka from barcelona has come in as our sixth choice center back and um, he's come out alone for the rest of the season he does actually look like a quite well-rounded center half and he definitely won't be a major liability should he have to start some games or come on as a substitute but he, he's come in as an impact sub We'll see how he gets on this season. It's unlikely I would ever make a move with this sort of player. Two and a half star current, three star player. But he's still only 23 years old. So maybe he might improve and prove us all wrong. Now, Wayne Knowles from Manchester City for 3.3 million. This is probably the signing that most excites me. He's not the best, but it most excites me. He's an English striker from Man City for 3.3 million. As you can see, he's on a lot of money. 
basically every side, every top side in England was after him. He was in into the last year of his contract and he was transfer listed by request, which is why we were able to get him for such a low fee. And I'm going to be giving this boy as much game time as humanly possible. And he, basically he was one of the reasons why I loaned out Willem as well. Willem is far more well-rounded than this player and will be able to handle a long game time out getting first-team football all the time. Whereas I think Wayne can uh, benefit just as much coming on as a substitute for us and then maybe with a view of next season leaving the club on loan. Or maybe not. Maybe he develops absolutely brilliantly straight away. But for the time being, he's going to be remaining in the first-team squad and basically being our third-choice striker, which might make you confused why we've signed Florian Monzon from Velez for £9 million. This one's another striker. He's coming in as our fourth choice, basically. Wayne Knowles is ahead of him on the pecking order purely because I want to develop him rather than how their attributes actually uh, compare. But at £9 billion, I thought it was a cheap enough deal. We still had plenty of money left over and I was searching for maybe a loan option, maybe someone who on a free, but nobody really stood out. And signing this guy for £9 million, at 22 years old with 2.5 star current, 3.5 star potential, I thought it was a worthy investment. And no doubt in my mind, I'm making a profit on him should we come to sell him maybe next season. And then two English boys coming in to strengthen the squad massively. Josh Tymon has come in for the released Ender Stevens to become our backup left wing back. He's 24 years old now and maybe hasn't developed as well as he would have on previous FMs. And maybe his potential has been capped. Uh, I don't know what he's doing in real life. Maybe it's not as good as we are as um, previous versions of FM have thought he was going to be. But to me, he's pretty comparable to Luca Pellegrini, who is of course still our first choice. And Pellegrini is obviously the better player. He is actually injury prone, according to his coaching report. As you can, where is it? Uh, oh, well, he was injury prone. That's now being removed. But he was like, it was only like the slight injury prone. So Josh Tymon can find himself getting plenty of football. And he's a definite upgrade on um, Ender Stevens. At £10.5 million, pounds, it might be a bit much. But we are seriously lacking an English talent in our first team squad. So I thought it was worth bringing him in. And then the biggest sign of the summer, as you have probably already noticed, is Jordan Pickford for £23.5 million. Pounds. Now, the fact that he was available for such a fee when he was already worth maybe £30 million pounds at Everton, they haven't been relegated, he wasn't transfer listed by request, so why they accepted this offer, I have no idea. But he ends up coming in, he's on £150 grand a week, which is a lot, but that's only, I think it's only ten grand more than he was on at Everton. Um, and he's coming straight in as our first choice. Jack Butland will be dropped for this season and will become our backup goalkeeper i think this is a massive upgrade if we compare the two here i actually haven't done this so i hope it doesn't end up with egg on my face uh, i've got uh, the overview jack butland in the blue and john pickford in the green better distribution better communication better mentally worse speed and physical which i'm not concerned about this very similar in shot stopping jack butland has the edge aerially but um, as you can see here, John Pickford has a very a lot of attributes going his way, particularly in the mental category. Um, definitely a lot better there. So I think that is a big, big upgrade. He's still England's first choice keeper, I believe. I don't think any regens come. Well, there we are. We've got England's number one and number two. Maybe Angus Gunn's ahead of Jack Butland. I don't know. But I'm um, very happy to get someone who's English who's going to be part of our first eleven no matter what so that's the transfer business that's happened so far 46 and a half million pounds spent 12 million pound brought in but as i mentioned earlier there is some other things that could happen we've still got 19 million pounds available with 100k in the wage budget and jerome on jean now this one's sort of snuck on me he's got one year left on his deal he's not interested on um uh talking about a new contract he's not i've been trying for the entire summer so I'm left in a bit of a dilemma. Do I let him go for a cut down fee or do I just risk losing him on a free next summer? Which is maybe what I'm tending towards because the money that we've been offered is sort of 28 and a half, 30, that sort of fee. Um, whilst that's nothing to sneeze at, he's such a good player. I really don't want to lose him, but unfortunately it looks like it's going to be the case. If he does end up staying past this transfer window, we're going to be bombarding him every week trying to offer him a new contract from now until January. But of course, if he gets to that December mark where he hasn't agreed a new deal, clubs will then begin coming in and offer him a contract to sign him on a free at the end of this season, which I really don't want to do either. So I think between now and the end of the summer transfer window, which is I think there's about a week left, 
as you can see, five days there. I think I might end up letting Onjin go. In terms of replacements, um, we've obviously got Patella, Bella Kotchap, and Tilo Kera, who will be our first three choice uh, defenders there. Bruno Amiodia and George Cuenca then become our backups, which means we need one more. And I've had some preliminary searches in terms of trying to find centre backs and not really being able to see anybody on the level of Onjin. So it might be a major, major issue. But anyway, we'll talk about the rest of the transfer window after our game for today's episode, which will be against Liverpool in the Community Shield. Of course, we were FA Cup winners. They were Premier League winners. So we face each other today. Oh, let's quickly go over the squad once again, because somebody has come in who you won't probably uh, recognise. Lucas Nunes comes in. He was out on loan last season. He went back to Argentina, I believe. Argentinos Juniors had a decent season for them. And now he's coming in. He's going to play a backup to Jean-Pierre. But I will be looking to give him as much game time as possible. Very talented attacking midfielder. He can play in the centre of midfield as well, should he be required. Classed as a wonder kid by the media. Again, three-star current, five-star potential is absolutely fantastic. Some of the players will manage to keep a hold of. Haaland had a couple of bids in. Esposito has signed a new deal. So he will be staying for the foreseeable future. I think everybody else has been pretty quiet on the um, transfer front. Nobody really coming in with major offers. Ronaldo Sanchez was casually linked to Spurs. That ended up coming to nothing. I think our player values are too high now for teams to sort of come in and lowball figures to try to get us to sell. Anyway, that brings us to today's game where our lineup is going to look something like this. So Pickford is going to start in goal. Bella Kocha, Batella and Kerra come in as our centre-backs. Jerome Onjin has now been dropped. Um, and I will be continuing to play these three until the fate of Onjin has been decided. Dodo as our right wing back. George Baldock ended up staying at the club. Um, I thought he was deal was running out at the end of the season. It didn't. And I thought rather than sign a back up, he is more than good enough to play a back up. And there was nobody who I could sign who would really challenge Dodo for that first choice spot. So I stuck with George Baldock. Uh, Sanchez and Daniel must start in the centre of midfield. Actually, Marib is going to start in the centre of midfield. He is a slightly worse in the box-to-box -box midfielder role. But um, I need to get him game time and get him developing. Jean-Pierre is, of course, going to play in behind Erling Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito. We've got a couple of our young boys on the bench who will be coming on at some point during this game, should all things go well. But here's how Liverpool line up. Sadio Mane up top this time. Chiesa, Awa and Milico, I believe, is a Torino um, player in real life. Yeah, they signed him for £11.5 million. Pounds. Um, Palacios, Napi Keita, Fabinho at right back. Interesting. Not really a right back, although he's got the stats for it. Rogerio playing a left back mate in his debut. Is that Sassuolo? It is Sassuolo. Uh, interesting, interesting signing there. Skriniar, Joe Gomez, and Allison completing the lineup for Liverpool. Uh, we beat them. We smashed them in the FA Cup final. Let's see if we can do it in the Community Shield. First highlight of the game, only two minutes in. It's Liverpool in an advanced area. Rogerio, I was just taking the mick out of him a little bit there. Thankfully, John Pickford is equal to the task and can keep him out. Three minutes in now, Esposito gets dispossessed by Chiesa and Awa can bring the ball forward for Liverpool. They haven't got very many options and Tilo Kerr with a decent challenge but a false and Naby Keita who goes for goal. I think Pickford had that covered. Another highlight now, Tilo Kerr with a throw in an advanced position for us. Dodo keeps the ball well. Mariba, I think that was going in if Esposito didn't get his head on it but unfortunately he did and it went over the bar. Another highlight now, Batella manages to get his head clear. Naby Keita keeps the ball alive for Liverpool as Palacio switches the player beautifully to Fabinho on this right-hand side. Chiesa and Fabinho linking up nicely, gets past Pellegrini, the ball's in, Batella clears only as far as Palacios. Liverpool switch flanks now and Ruggiero comes down. Dodo with a decent challenge, he's marking him well, um, but he eventually gets past Dodo, does him again. He does him again, he's absolutely torturing Dodo on that right-hand side. Thankfully, Pickford again is equal to the challenge. Another highlight now, Awa coming down the left-hand side this time. Mariba manages to get back and get their challenge in. A false to Esposito, I think it was there. Palacios who actually won that ball. Esposito driving down the left-hand side, gets dispossessed, but he wins the ball back nicely. False to Olmo, back to Esposito. Is anybody going to take the strike on? Oh, it's fell Esposito. What a lovely, lovely worked goal. His first goal of the season, obviously. Jean-Pierre with the assist. Let's say that again. So here we are, some nice work by Esposito to keep a hold of the ball on the edge of the area and we'll work this really well. And Jean-Pierre with a little deft 
through ball, through to Esposito, into the back line of Liverpool. And that was a very, very well-worked goal, 1-0. Only seven minutes remaining in this first half. There's another highlight. Mariba pinches the ball and gets a clay to Haaland. And Esposito is in behind here. The defender's getting back. Allison with a very, very good save. One-on-one -on -one with Esposito. Another highlight now. Liverpool coming down this right-hand side. We get a clear only as far as Naby Keita. And they really do have us pinned in, in attacking situations. We're managing to get the ball just about clear. But they are always first to the ball. Mania gets it in this time. Again, it falls to Naby Keita. On the edge of the area. Rogério is having a great game at left wing back. Chiesa back to Fabinho. Takes a strike. And that is absolutely stupendous. What a goal that is. Liverpool equalise in the 43rd minute. His first goal of the season. I mean it was some uh, a really long period of sustained pressure by Liverpool here. And this is just unbelievable. Fabinho. Uh, take a bow son. Goal of the season already. We're already the first game in. But uh, a little bit disappointing that we couldn't hang on for the first half with the one goal advantage. Highlight straight from kickoff though. I won't give the ball away. Maybe Liverpool can counter themselves with Palacios. Fabinho is doing absolutely excellent work down this right hand side for Liverpool. We managed to cut out his pass though. Don't give the ball away in this position. John Pierre sets away Esposito on the left hand side. Completely does his man. Finds Haaland in the box. Back to Esposito. Back to Haaland. And there we are. Erling Haaland's first goal of the season. It doesn't actually go down as an Esposito assist. I'm guessing he took the strike and the Liverpool's defender's block has ended up making a fall at Erling Haaland. But Liverpool don't stay equalised for long as we go into half-time, hopefully 2-1 up. And there we have it, a pretty even game going by the match stats. Sheffield United 2, Liverpool 1. We'll kick off for the second half, no need to make any changes just yet. Everybody's relatively fresh in terms of the conditioning. I don't think there's been any major uh, international competitions over the summer, so everybody is pretty fresh as we pick up with the first highlight of the second half. 51 minutes in, Skriniar on the left-hand side for Liverpool. Plays it back to Palacios, who finds Awa. We've kept our line really, really well, and Liverpool are finding it hard to break us down. Mariba drives down the right hand side. He does his man. He keeps going Rogerio with a challenge, but it falls to Dodo. Mariba back to Dodo. Whip the ball in. Haaland is there. He goes just over. Now, I know we're winning and making this sort of change is probably a little bit stupid, but I'm bringing on Wayne Knowles for Erling Haaland in the striker position. I'm bringing on Lucas Nunes for Jean Pierre in the attacking midfield role. This is the sort of thing I'm going to have to do if I want these boys to develop. Oh. Fell by Mareba. Not yellow card, thank God for that. I might have to get Mareba off after this. Erling Haaland finds Esposito on a bags of space. He's got to finish this. He was offside anyway, but he should be burying that chance. I should have maybe took off Esposito, but never mind. Remind me to take off Mareba. I've just got the worst feeling that he's going to get his second yellow card and get himself sent off after I've already seen him put in a challenge that got uh, played on through. Mohamed Salah down this right-hand side for Liverpool. Plays the ball in. It's cleared. No need. Oh, it hits the bar. Taylor Kerra. So he managed to get rid. I thought he was going to end up booting it in the back of the net there. We're going to get Mariba off. We will bring on Marcus Antonio in his position. And that will be our final sub of the game. These boys are going to have to see out the rest of this. They're playing positively. We are going to match that. Um, and there we are. 3-1. Wayne Knowles. Remember the name. First goal of the season. Straight from a corner. Danny Olmo plays it in. And Wayne Knowles has only been on the pitch 15 minutes. But he gets his first goal, beats his man, completely nowhere to be seen the Liverpool defence. And I'm really, really pleased he's got the first goal of the game. And he's justified his substitution at the very, very least. Only 15 minutes to go in this match. Marcus Antonio brings the ball down the right-hand side, plays it in, falls to Pellegrini. Alisson with a decent save. Why do we always keep it in? We keep, every player I've seen keeps it in when it's going out for a corner when... This is what it leads to. A nice little counter for Liverpool. Milico coming down this left-hand side. It's cleared only as fast for Benio. Nearly got his second of the game. <laughs> Ten minutes remain in the match. Awas coming down the left-hand side. Goes for goal. That is an awful, awful strike. Liverpool sticking with their positive team mentality going into the last five. I will stick with those as well as long as things are going okay for us. Wayne Knowles manages to find Esposito. Finds Dodo who's in behind. Alisson again with another save. He's done okay Alisson in goal actually. Hasn't made any world he saves, but he's always done what's been expected as Milikor's in behind now. Oh, Milikor. Vincenzo Milikor gets the goal that brings Liverpool back into this game with only five minutes remaining. And this all comes for our own attack. Um, Mohamed Salah with a long a through ball over the top for Milikor. We were clearly, obviously, pushed too far up. 
who was that patella tries to get the block in at the last second but he's not able to do it and with that we will go cautious for the last five minutes as Liverpool go very very attacking um, we will look to kill this game going very shorter dribble less be more disciplined and we'll see if we can stay out the rest of this game and come out three two winners but we've got to survive this highlight Pickford clears doesn't mess up like Jack Butland Wayne Knowles attempts to get the head in he's played in through by Dodo Wayne Knowles he is he's going to be a god he's going to be an English god I'm telling you now he is <laughs> maybe I maybe I'm jumping the gun a little, a, little, a little bit but in his first game he's got two goals only been on the pitch for half an hour or so and he's done absolutely fantastically in every highlight we've seen him get involved in and that is a great finish we've seen Esposito and Haaland miss them sort of opportunities D in D out um but thankfully Wayne Knowles has come in and he's shown the boys how it's done I would love for him to get a hat trick in his first game but that is going to be full time Sheffield United get another minor trophy in the cabinet the community shield is coming home with us and I believe that's our first one so happy happy days with that we will congratulate the boys and Wayne Knowles congratulations to you my son so there's not going to be another game this episode I am going to play through the rest of the transfer window likely to see Roman Jean leave the club likely to see someone come in and replace him unless he maybe wants to start a contract now no community shield winners is not good enough for him uh, it'll be disappointing to lose a player of his quality but it's going to happen throughout this save you know we're not the highest reputation team at the minute um, and the better players are going to want to leave on occasions but I, I go kick myself for letting his contract get to this stage where he's into his final year so we are into the transfer window dear and the only thing that's really been happening is Tilo Kerrow had a 60 million pounds offer from Spurs not the right centre back I want to sell Spurs you could have easily had Jerome Mongeen for that sort of money but they're not coming in for him even though I've been offering him out at 40 million pounds I think I'm going to take the executive decision to keep him at the club we might end up losing him on a free next season but he is a very very talented player and if we could potentially convince him in the next six months to sign a new deal that would be fantastic if we can't we can't we end up losing him on a free that's just the way it goes sometimes and it's something that I won't let happen again if a player is not signing a new deal with 18 months left of the deal uh, contract or two years you know I will I will attempt to see uh, keep that club player at the club or sell him on before it gets to this point but I'm going to quickly go through the rest of the transfer window and there it is nobody came in for Onjin on the final day of the season so he will be staying at the club hopefully he comes out of his unhappiness and we can get him a great to a new deal but if he can't we can't and that's just the way it goes sometimes anyway looking forward to the next episode we've got the European Super Cup against Arsenal which I'm not going to bring you that that's just too boring um, but I will bring you Burnley at home hopefully a winnable game in the Premier League and an unknown team in our first season in the Champions League group stage which should be very very interesting but anyway if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy